Lord some glory tonight. Lift your hand and just worship him tonight. He's here. His presence is here very strong tonight. Don't let nothing distract you. Don't let the cakes distract you. This is a crucial time now. This is a crucial time. Got about an hour to you. To be the new year. It's a crucial time. Oh my goodness. Holy Spirit, we bless your name tonight. Give you glory and honor tonight. There's going to be a shifting tonight. There's going to be a shifting tonight. How many of you believe in God? If you believe in tonight. If thou can believe, all things are possible to them that believe. I strong believe one minute to the new year, God will say, drop something before the new year. It's not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he repent. Tonight we bless you. I do nothing with God without you. There are many of your people that are here tonight. They were here this morning, Lord. They have come again to come and show love to you. Many were struggling to even get up from their bed after they went home. But the sacrifice will be here tonight. <clears throat> Don't deny them of what they want, Lord. They came to seek you, Lord. Don't deny them of what they want, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The new year is almost here. There were many of us that have so many plans. And I pray that God will help us tonight. Have your seat for a while. Thank you, Jesus. Bless God for Prophetess Dovi. Amen. Bless the Lord for her. Prophetess Dovi, we bless God for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord for your prayers, your commitment, your blessings. Bless the Lord for you. God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. place to ever be in the presence of the Lord. The best place to ever be is in the presence of the Lord. God of my people, oh God, those who are made a covenant by sacrifice. Out of them, oh Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. I was having a conversation with our bishop, Bishop Kunk, and somebody just bless God for him tonight. <laughs> Amen. Our father. He will be here in a few weeks for our powerful consecrations and ordinations. He will be here in a few weeks. You know what? I was just telling my, you know, my wife was the first person that told me, but sometimes we can be high headed with men. <laughs> you know, sometimes, huh? <laughs> She was telling me, she said, New Year Day, prophet. We can't start the fast New Year Day. At least let it be on the second. I said, no. So Bishop called. Bishop said, even if it's a form of fast on New Year Day, they will say yes, but they go and eat. That's not a good thing. <laughs> because New Year Day is a day that you can't just control the first day. 
So that's what will happen. I said, okay, Father, whatever you say, amen. So I will first begin on a second. <laughs> so that you can enjoy your new year, amen. Even if I say fast on New Year Day, you will stay go start a brand new year. <laughs> and you will stay go eat what you want to eat, amen. So we're going to start our fast on the second. Because we want some people lying to us that they're fasting. And why they did it with some talkies and stuff like that, amen. <laughs> so at least the old man saved us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, amen. We're going to have a great time tonight, I promise you. Whatever the enemy have make you to do unwillingly is going to be undue tonight in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Feet washing is so important. Jesus Christ talked about it in St. John chapter 13. And then he said, I must wash your feet. And the apostle Peter said, no, Lord, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part of me. There are places you step that you're not supposed to step. And you're carrying those kind of stuff. So wash your feet is, is spiritual also and also for humility. It's a sign of humility, but it also is spiritual. I will never forget this. And I'm on life, I'm saying it. I was renting to where the Lord called me, to where God appeared to me. Hallelujah. In, in Ghanansville, that's some part of Liberia. Some of you who haven't been there. Uh, that's some part of Liberia. It's called Ghanansville, and it's called a place, Cow Factory. I was renting from a guy called Eno. He worked with the security system in Liberia. He worked with the NBR, National Bureau of Investigation. I was renting from him. And he had a little problem with his leg. It was worn out straight. And my pastor came to the house to see him, and we did feet washing. Immediately after the feet washing, he walked straight up. That thing broke. He started walking. Send that time. He had never walked the way he used to walk. So I'm telling you, I witnessed this with my own eyes. I witnessed it with my own eyes. He walked straight up. That thing broke. He started walking. Send that time. He had never walked the way he used to walk. So I'm telling you, I witnessed this with my own eyes. I witnessed it with my own eyes. There are a lot of things that are spiritual. We don't understand them. And many of us say, oh, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. I went to a church, they said they can't use anointing oil. You know, to preach. They said they don't use anointing oil. Well, you know, Jesus used the oil. He gave an instruction to use the oil. Paul used a handkerchief as a mantle and healed a lot of diseases. Amen. Was Paul not called by God? He was called by God. But this, Moses had a rock, and that rock he used to pack the Red Sea. Amen? Amen. He used the rock. <clears throat> so there are a lot of things God put in the scriptures. We're not doing it, and uh, we just relax. But I strongly believe tonight, God will touch us, and some things will be happening in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody here got a bike problem, but after I wash your feet tonight, Amen. you will never have that bike problem anymore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Also, somebody here, you are developing an enlarged heart. An enlarged heart. When you're breathing, you don't breathe normally like you. Your breath won't cut off. After the feet washing tonight, you will never experience nothing no more in the name of Jesus. I don't want to get into the prophetic right now. So let's get to the word tonight. Amen. The Bible tells us uh, in the book of St. Mark chapter, we're going there quickly. I'm going to continue from where I left this thing. power tonight. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. As long as you obey God, you can't die before your time. Yeah. I'm so serious. Many people die before their time because of lack of obedience. I'm so serious. Let's read together. One, two, three, go. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us crawl over to the other side. Many of you expecting to cross over to the other side. And nobody here sitting here under the sound of my voice. None of you here know what is ahead of you on the other side. You don't know. No one can tell me in 24 years sitting here under the sound of my voice. None of you here know what is. No one here under the sound of my voice know what is on the other side because you haven't been there before. In Jesus' mighty name. You haven't been there. 
You can tell me here tonight that 2024, you had your first child. You can't tell me 2024, you ate some chalk turkey. No, because 2024 has not yet come. So you don't really know what lies in the new, on the other side. And many are hoping, Brother Emma, can you give me some more bass on the thing? I'm streaming on it. I'm not getting nothing. I'm not hearing myself. Amen. No one knows what is on the other side. But look at what happened here. Jesus said the same day, watch the scripture now. The same day, when he came, he said to them, let us go on the other side. Paraphrasing it. Let us cross over to the other side. And this other side, they have never experienced anything. Can I tell you something here? Every year, guy, own spirit. Every year that ever come, a carry spirit. There are things that God has prepared that is waiting for you on the other side. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Somebody say amen. Talk back to me. There are things that God has prepared for next year. What you experience this year is different from what you're going to experience next year. Because every year carry a different spirit. And never mind, the same way God has prepared some things for you next year, Satan also got something prepared. Amen, somebody. He prepared some things next year as well. So you got to be very careful of what you're going to meet on the other side. When Jesus told his disciples, let's go to the other side, they didn't know there was somebody there that they needed to pray for. The moment he said, let's go on the other side, he didn't know there was a storm and a wave. Keep going. Look at that scripture. Hmm? When they have left the multitude, he took along in the boat as he was. And you see there? So what happened? The Bible said they have left the multitude. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Somebody understand what I'm saying? Amen. When they have what? When they have left the multitude. You. My goodness, I don't know how to power free this message so, so you can get it right. When they had left the one, marked you. He and his disciple got into the boat. Why they left the multitude? Because there are some place God is taking you. Not everybody can fit to go with you. You have to leave some people behind. Nobody hearing me here. Someone shout hallelujah. You got to leave some people behind. There are people that are dragging you in the mud. There are people that are holding you. They are SS backishes. You got to leave some things. Hear me, my brothers and sisters. You have made a lot of resolution so many years, and no resolution never come to fulfillment because you refuse to leave some things behind. If you don't leave, you can't clean. Somebody shout hallelujah. Even before you get married to a wife, God said, you got to leave your father and your mother and cleave to your wife. If you don't leave, you can't cleave. There are some men still want to be child and child can't get married. If you stay, I can like a boy. Marriage is not for boys. Marriage is not for children. Marriage for mature people. So if you are not willing to leave their mama attitude, a childish attitude, you can't cleave. So the Bible said, watch this now. The Bible said, when they had left the multitude, they were with the multitude. But to go to the other side, they got to leave the multitude. Why? Because all the multitude can fit in the boat. Amen, somebody. Why you think they left the multitude? Because the boat couldn't carry everybody. There are many of you, your boat too small, but you won't carry, oh my goodness, you want to carry everybody. If you made a mistake, you want to carry everybody, your boat will sink because not everybody can fit on your boat. Not everybody has left weight. There are some people that are heavy weight. You can't allow them to get in that boat. I'm not talking about heavy weight in structure. There are people carrying a lot of demons. Oh my goodness. They can't fit in your boat. Nobody hear what I'm saying. There are some people 
people that are giving a lot of demons with them, you can't allow them to get in your boat or else they will cause trouble in your boat. I ain't got no witness in this place. Nobody hearing me here. Somebody shout hallelujah. The last time I checked, watch this. The last time I checked, the Bible tells me there was a boat. They were selling, going to touch her, and something happy. What? The last time I checked, watch this. The last time I checked, the Bible tells me. The Bible tells me because Jonah was in the boat. Who are you carrying in your boat? Jonah on the boat. The mistake they made, they had Jonah on the boat. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, who is on your boat? Because you are not on the boat. You are not focused on that. I need to be focused because I'm going to gonna wake you up right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at slap your neighbor and say, who on your boat? right now somebody shout hallelujah look i slap your neighbor say who on your boat supposed to be on your boat you got a resolution but you carry so many people god told abraham separate from lot when i told you to leave your father's house i didn't tell you to carry a lot with you and lot was in problem so they had to separate Many you are afraid to separate. But can I tell you somebody? You can separate, you will not celebrate. Nobody here wants somebody to shout hallelujah. Sometimes you gotta separate to celebrate. Who is on your board? Don't take them to 2024. Because there'll be so many weight, so much weight. He said, let go on the other side. They didn't just go to the other side, they left the multitude. Because if you are gonna dare put the multitude in that boat, that boat was gonna sink. Many of you, the reason why your life is sinking because you are not verify or investigate who is on your boat. Who, 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 who is on your boat? You are not investigated. You want to carry everybody you, because of sympathy. You want to help everybody. You are not Father Christmas. You are not called to help everybody. Am I talking to somebody? You are not called to carry everybody. Somebody shout hallelujah. Who is on your boat? Who on your boat? They left the you. That's what Jesus did. Oh God left multitude. Then why am I carrying everybody? Because sometimes you were lost in the crowd. And the crowd can always make you cry. Many of you want so many cry. But the too much friend you have, there's too much trouble. Woo. Because not every friend understand you. Not every friend know what God have called you to. Not everybody understand your vision. Some of you here tell your vision to the wrong people and they want to break you down because they are jealous of what you carry on the inside of you. I don't know what I got Joseph in his place tonight. But Joseph went and told his brothers. He said, God is about to make me great. To sell him, put you in the. Who are you carrying with you? You yelling? Don't let the devil come in. Don't yell. What is your plan? God is washing. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, God is washing. He left the mother to you. You know one thing I know about Jesus. Somebody hearing me? One thing I know about Jesus. Jesus was never after mother to you are after the attitude. Hey. Multitude. He didn't care for this. He left the multitude and told disciples. The word disciple means discipline people, mature people. But many of you got a lot of bunch of people who are not mature, who don't understand you, who can't even bear single patient with you. But you're taking them. Listen to me. Every man with vision should be careful who walk with him. And walking with people that can't see the way you see, they will discourage you. Are you hearing me? 2024, don't walk with a bunch of fools. Somebody shout hallelujah. Watch this. 
I'm serious. If you want to make it, there's no time left for you. you every year come, your age adding up. And you still want to play marble. You're not from the country. Somebody shout hallelujah. You still want to be playing around because there's no time to play. It's time to pray. Your age is adding up. You still acting at 16. Why are you telling? Where are you coming from? Some of you are not even telling. You're 50. You know my worst frustration when I see 16 years old, 16, 16, 17 years old girls. I say, you buy your own casting. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody here? Amen, somebody. They left a multitude. Look at your neighbor and say, leave some people behind. You, you, you don't mean what I'm saying. Look at your neighbor and say, this year that come and leave some people behind. Some of you, you got people following you who don't honor you. You follow people that are following you, they don't respect you. You got people in your boat that you're giving rah, but they're harassing you. How in the world you want to accomplish that which God wants to accomplish when you're giving so much that God did not ask you to carry? Amen. I don't want to be to a place where I'm taught already. But I'm a celebrity. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He left the multitude beyond. Multitude. Meaning a bunch of people that just want to eat from you, but they never give you anything. The multitude. Now one time they gave Jesus offering. But every time they want to eat the ten fish and bread. <laughs> we hungry. <laughs> but I haven't seen no one ever give Jesus offering. Besides Mary, Joanna, and the rest of the four women, Mary and Martha. The other women were giving while the others were just crying on what others are giving. A lot of time, people just want the right. But they don't give me Mary and Martha. The other women were giving what the others were just crying on what others are giving. A lot of time, people just want the right, but they don't want to know how much the gas costs. Ah, you're talking right. <laughs> Can you pick me up? You don't ask, is gas in the car first? I'm preaching to somebody here. I want to make you mad because too much you've been carrying 2023. Unnecessary things. Amen, somebody. Make your resolution. Don't leave God out of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus said, let leave the multitude. Do you know why he said it? Because the boat, they didn't say ship, but boat. Boat can carry a multitude. Many of you, you don't even have boat. You got a kino. <laughs> your capacity is too small. But you won't carry everything on your head. You, you, you don't want to separate from the friends. The friends that are criticizing you. The friends that are looking down on you. The friends that don't stop. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I called one of my sons in Liberia and I said to him, Why just? I said, Would you have plenty of church in Liberia? If you can't go to that church, don't call me for nothing. There are people who just want from you. They want to be part of what you are part of. But they only want from you. But whatever you do, they don't want to be your part. They call them leech, who's a blood, witches, and wizard. Amen, somebody. You need to look for people 2024 that you can feel on. Yeah. Amen, somebody. They left the multitude because not everybody could fit in a boat. Who are you carrying? Look at the friends. You got some friends on Facebook that your friend, they don't even speak English. 
but you got them as friends. They don't even know you. You got people on Facebook that don't even look like you. Why? Because their attitude is different from your attitude. Amen, somebody. They are causing problems. You say you got them as friends. It's about the numbers. It's about the attitude. Amen, somebody. This year, people of God, you got too much. God has too much to make. Not yet to shout. Oh, new, right now, as soon as New Year, we be New Year, New Year, New Year. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Say some of you not happy, but you will say Happy New Year. Some of you won't be happy though, but you will say Happy New Year. Amen, somebody. Everything that will cause you to be unhappy, God has given me the authority by the grace of God to break that spirit from this place. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody? Hey, let it come in from me. the prophet, I got your number from a friend from Minnesota. I said, what happened? I said, I said what happened? She said, they arrested him. I said, your son? He said, yeah. I said, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what your son be. She said, prophet, my son never did drugs before. But I said, why they arrested him? She said, because he was with the friends that have been doing drugs. Somebody say hallelujah. When you move with the wrong people, when God ready to deal with them because you associate with them, it will affect you. I don't know what I'm talking to you. Somebody say hallelujah. It will affect you. God forbid, God forbid. When the world come to America, the righteous, the unrighteous, they always suffer. So because of one person, you are invited in your life called chaos. Calling a lot of chaos in your life. But yet, you are still carrying them because you rather be hurt then to maintain the friendship. You won't be hurt to maintain friendship. And friendship is something that you should be careful. Why don't you? Because there are some friends who are not friends. Who are you carrying in your boat? God could begin to tell me this thing. Because they got a friend, they got a friend in me. Friend in me. Your enemy bold. God could begin to tell me this thing. Because they got a friend, they got a friend of me. Friend of me. Your enemy. A windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat. So that it was already filling. Now imagine they were going to take the multitude and the encounter property. And they didn't know what was ahead of them. Amen. You don't know what is ahead of you, but you got a bunch of friends with you. When crisis comes, those friends will help to kill you more. I'm speaking to somebody tonight. Am I talking to somebody here? Your best friend is a friend that is with you when you dry, when you don't have nothing, when you are struggling, when things Jesus left the multitude after they got into the boat, they met crisis. You don't know what is ahead of you, but you got a bunch of people that's draining you, that's sucking you, that lying on you, disappointing you, that pretending to say they love you while they want to lose you. Somebody say hallelujah. Now you see, when storm into the boat, so imagine if Jesus were going to take the mother to you and encounter storm. So he left the multitude and took disciples. Somebody shout hallelujah. No, you don't know what's 2024 looking. So the resolutions that you are making this year were accomplished. I will do that. I will do that. Hold a break. Somebody say, hold a break. You don't know the storm that is ahead of you. The crisis that is ahead of you, you don't know yet. I don't care how much you pray until a fire comes from your mouth. There will be a storm ahead of you. Every journey got storm. There is no journey on this earth that don't have storm. I don't care how educated you are, how smart you are, how, how much you rich. There's a storm ahead of you. So in planning for 2024, the first thing you need to realize, don't play with our God. Hallelujah. Give me a proverb quickly because I got 10 more minutes to run down this thing. I'm enjoying it. Somebody say he's enjoying it. I must bless you by four. Somebody say hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Prefer. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. What's the, what's the voice that I'm looking for? Thank you, Jesus. Prophet 19. We're going to start from verse 21. Of Prophet chapter 19. Your plan, number one, that you need to do as you leave this place tonight. The first thing you want to do. Every plan you want to make that don't leave God out of here. Let's see. One, two, three, everybody read. One, two, three, go. Read with me. There are many plans in your heart. Nevertheless, the law counsel that will stand. So if your plans that you are making for 2024, if God is not in there, it's not going to work. Let God plan be number one. Let God purpose be number one. Let, let God. Don't you want to get married? You want to be house? You want to this, that? And God is not in it? You focus on how to get a house, how to get a husband, how to get a wife, but then you leave God who's supposed to bless you with this thing. And God is not in your plan. Many of you here, you have plan, but God is not in it. I dare in my life to ever plan be God. Somebody shout hallelujah. She started crying. My son is arrested. Why? He associated with drugs. They caught them and they caught a lot of drugs in the car. When they were on their way to Indiana and they caught them. And I said, what happened? She said, your son never did drugs. I said, yes. I said, they did not, they did not arrest your son because of the drugs. She said, Prophet, what do you mean? The police just called me. The thing on the news. And, 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 and they all on the news. That they I said, yeah, yeah. I said, they didn't, they, your, your son, they didn't arrest him for drugs. For drugs. She said, what happened? What happened? How did they arrest him? Why? I said, give me a chance, mama. Let me talk. I said, even though they found drugs in the car, but your son had a gun. He had a gun that wasn't registered. He had a carrying gun illegally. He said, Brother, that boy never showed me a gun before. I said, call him. Call the police. Cause what happened? I'm telling you the truth, sir. I don't lie. And they call for sure he had a gun that was never registered. So he associated with drugs people, then he had gun. And they've locked him up for 25 years. The case is on. 25 years in prison. They didn't even play. They didn't give you warning or whatever. 25 years for a 22 years old. <laughs> After he came from prison, 25 from 22, he had wasted his life. We've been fasting, praying for him. Hallelujah. Why? Because the people you want to carry on your boat is not fit for you to carry. You're not taking drugs. Why you got drugs, friends? <laughs> You're not gay. All your friends are. <laughs> I suspect you. <laughs> Hallelujah. All my children know who is gay, who not gay, because they know the sound. They more go to the store. When they see them, they can say, Daddy. I said, okay. I just, <laughs> say, Daddy. I said, yes. <laughs> and the son, you know, I said, Daddy. Sean Kino said, Daddy. I said, yeah, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> then then Zoe came to me. She said, yeah, Daddy. I even seen the rainbow. The rainbow was in <laughs> Why are you want to associate with people that can fit in your boat? Are you with me? Somebody say hallelujah. There are many plans in your heart. Don't leave God out of it. When you make this plan of your life, make sure God be the head, God be everything. Because the Bible says there are many planes. Many of you got so many planes. But for those planes to go on, you got to take God first. Are somebody hearing me here? You got to take God first. So God gave me enough, enough anointing tonight to break some spirit from over people in Jesus' name. Because many of you, you have made so many planes, resolutions, nothing come from out of it. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Somebody say amen. amen. Say the Lord, amen. 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 <clears throat> let God be in your plan. Look at your name. What's it? Let God be in your plan. Let God be in your plans. Amen to somebody. Say the Lord, amen to somebody. Amen. Don't leave him now. This year coming, my advice to you <coughs> is to please, with respect, please, before you step out of the house, it will hurt you, but if something don't hurt you, it won't help you. Please delete some friends in your contact. Keep importing people contact in your phone. Because there's some of you, the friends you got, your Facebook friends you got, they are all just for gossip and for news. It will hinder you not to achieve your resolution for 2024. Because if you find Jonah on your boat, your goose will lost. Jonah in the boat. And every passengers on that boat was throwing their goose in the water because the boat was shaking. It was about to sink. They thought the problem was the goose. But the problem was not the goose. The problem was Jonah. Some of you, nothing wrong with you. Your goose is intact. But the friend that you got with you is the problem. That's why nobody want to buy your goose. Because the free guy in your goose, they're not happy you to sell that goose. They're happy to destroy the goose. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Nothing wrong with you. But the people you associate with are putting words in your ears. And words have power. Let me, Eve was doing very good until she had last set on, on her boat. And set on to her to do something that was very wrong. And she listened to the snakes. Some of your friends are so so serpent. Some of them shout hallelujah. Listen to me. I God in your plan. Mm, some of them shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I God in your plan. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I hear in your plan. Luke chapter 12, verse 16. Luke 12, 16. Let's get there quickly. I got 25 minutes to walk down your street. Luke chapter 12, verse 16. <coughs> now, street. I want you to read with me. One, two, three. Go ahead and read. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man, he plentiful, which means he has so much. Keep going, verse 17, quickly. And he thought within himself, he didn't add God, saying, What should I do, since I have no room to store my crops? See this man's resolution. See it. Verse 18. Keep going. That's how many of us are. Look at verse 18. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my bounds and build greater ones. And there I will store all my crumbs and my goose. Why just verse 19? Why just he had a resolution? And I will say, read with me. I will say to my soul, so you have many goose lay off for many years. Take your easy. Eat, drink, make merry. God was never in those plans. Have you seen God name there? No. He didn't even say by the grace of God. He didn't even say, God, I'm taking this. I will say this. I will do this. No, no, no. He had no God in his plans. All he was thinking of, how to show up to people that he rich. How to show the people that he got money. All he was doing, just party, making merry. And he forget about God. This is a sad thing. Why? You don't know what is ahead of you in this life. There are people that were bigger. And they went down. Somebody shout hallelujah. They had everything, but they still went down. 
Why? Because God had to be. That's what Jesus told the disciples. He said, seek you first the kingdom. Hallelujah. Stop seeking the things. Look at what he said. He said, I will say to my soul. Watch this now. Watch this. Everybody look at it. Watch this. I will say to my soul. You have many goods. Lay up for many years. Take your ease. Eat. Drink. And what? And be merry. Get drunk. Eat. Have girls. Have the women. Do this. Enjoy yourselves. One neck. Get somebody $10,000 for a neck. Enjoy yourself. God was not in your plan. Look at verse 20 quickly. Let's see verse 20. See verse 20. But. Somebody say but. When you don't ask God in your plan, God will come to tell you where he's playing. If you forget to ask God, he will come. If you don't ask him, he will come. God was not in his man plan, but God came and said to him. Ah. Look at how God called him. Read the word. One, two, three, go. Fool. This night, your soul will, will be required of you. Then who will those things be which you have provided? You know, it's a hurtful thing for you to work hard and somebody else to enjoy it. Preach, girl. Preach. Amen. Leave it alone. Yes, leave it alone. Amen. It is a hurtful thing. Something that you were hurt for. And somebody come and join it and insulting you. <laughs> Go. Amen. Let me see for another translation quickly. See for another translation. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You're all right. Amen. Somebody say amen. She want to preach so badly. Let's see. So, but God said, you fool. You will die this very night. See that thing. See it now. See it good. What God said? You fool. Because all your plans, I was not in it. Please don't be like that. You fool. You will die this very night. Then, who will get everything you work for? Ha! Who will get what? Everything that you work for. Who will get everything that you work for? Your soul is required. <laughs> Jesus says, suffer now the little children to come unto me. That is that what Jesus says, suffer now the little children. <laughs> she, will, she, pre she will preach you. That girl will preach you. Amen. Who will get these things? Your soul is required. Because God will order their plans. 2024. It's a great year. When God is in it. It's a great year. When God is in it. Hmm? Somebody say, that's number two, right? What was the first one? Let God be part of your plan. I stay on that thing. All right. The second one is it. Don't make, hear this very well. I want your ears to open. Don't make permanent decision in a temporary situation. Don't make what? Permanent decision in a temporary situation. There are many are suffering today as a result of the decision they made when they had situation that was temporary. If you haven't got anything from me tonight, get this one. Don't make a permanent decision in a temporary situation. It will hinder you. It will suffer you. Can I tell you something? There are many people that I know that got angry with church and walk away. They want to come by, but the decision has become permanent. There's a relationship. You had a little quarrel, just a little quarrel, little argument. The person walk away and decides, I don't need you no more. And they walk away. Embarrassment and shame have blocked them to ever come by. 
and that decision they made in that temporary situation have become permanent. And they have started to regret. It is dangerous to make a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Ruth chapter 1, the Bible tells you you don't have to go there because of time. Ruth chapter 1, the Bible says, Ruth, I mean not Ruth, I mean Naomi. Ruth chapter 1, the Bible tells me that Naomi, there was a little farming in Bethlehem. A little farming. The Bible says, little farming. Ruth chapter 1, verse 6, little farming. Guess what happened? She made the decision to go to the Moabites. When she went there, her husband died. Her two children died. Who sent her there? Herself. Why she went there? Because there was a family, a little family in Bethlehem. Only she and her husband and two boys left Bethlehem. Nobody ever left. They remained there and God visited that place and brought enough. No, she never heard anybody die from there. As a matter of fact, when she left boys, boys were enjoying life. But she left them in where? In Bethlehem. Because of the de decision this year that is coming, your decision is something that you should watch very carefully. Because decision either break or it make you. What decision are you making in that temporary situation? Are you walking away because somebody didn't speak to you? Are you walking away because they asked you to pay time and offering? Are you walking away because they didn't build for? Are you walking away? Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't make that decision. For the to keep that. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Don't make a permanent decision in a temporary situation. And Ruth that. There are many people around the world. They have made decisions on little things they could have fixed. God can use you like that. God can move like that. Are you with me, somebody? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Bishop Queen, I traveled to Australia. You know, Bishop Queen, Australia, God sent me there. First time going to Australia, I've been to 47 countries around the world doing crusade and revival. 47. Not state, I say countries. When I entered Australia, the church that Bishop took me to was a girl in the seven, a Caucasian girl, Caucasian. She came to church to pray that God might accept her soul and go home and commit suicide. She decided because my fiance walked on me and pregnant my friend, I'm going to die. Do not God. That situation just because the guy walk on you and impregnate your friend can make a decision that she must die. Why in case God was not going to allow Bishop Kung to take me to Australia? I saw her in the congregation. Now people don't know her from nowhere. The video are there. And I call her stand up. You were born April 7th. You were 24 years old. You came here to pray and go home and die. She said that to me. I call her, tell her breath, age, everything. She said that to me. Bishop Kuhn been here. He and myself went to Australia. In the congregation, God picked her up. So the pastor sent the organist to the house. When they went to her house, they met the rope in the city with a chair on her head. I thought she should go and die. Just because somebody pregnant her. I mean, so because just because your fiance met me husband. But fiance, you are going to end your life because of temporary. You are not even joy anywhere. Yes, Australia. One, do you understand what I'm saying? Come to my country. You'll find plenty of mess of free my children. Everybody free, free. You come to you don't need to go anywhere. You want to get yourself for one man. God sent me there. He sent me there will break that spirit. She lived in today. I got a son in Australia that called Lawrence Peter. Lawrence is in the church. He always call me and say, you ready to save this girl's life. You save her life. The brother was going to die from suicide. Hallelujah. 
you. How come now nah, a false prophet saving lives? I'm asking some of you who hearing some trash. Happy Bishop Kuhn know the story. Somebody shout hallelujah. Save her life. Today she's living. She was going to keep. As a matter of fact, what makes the situation worse? She knows nobody. And if you tell somebody, they will say, yeah, let me talk you out of it. But nobody told her that she went and put her own rope in the ceiling. Put a chair. What brought the church was to come and pray for God to accept her soul. And she didn't know that what God had directing her to go to church. So she can be saved. She planned to die. And God said, I'm sending a prophet that's going to save your life. By a prophet, God brought Israel on our captivities. By a prophet, God preserved her. I come to let you know, my Goshen brothers and sister, a summon in this place for me to save you from the vision that is ahead of you. My summon in this place. So bless your life. So there are some things that are supposed to happen when not happy. Am I talking to somebody here? Somebody shout hallelujah. Say, believe in God, believe in the prophet, so shall you prosper. Can I talk to somebody here? A prophet is an agent of change. I'm not talking to somebody here. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Don't know it. Hallelujah. So much advantage of us seven. Were you the respectful spirit? Amen, somebody. And it's so serious. Because a prophet is in a human flesh like you. You forget to know what God placed over his life. Look at what God said. Nowhere in the scripture that God ever shared his glory with nobody. nobody. Are you with me? But what God said, believe in him and believe in my prophet. He shared it. Second Chronicles 20 verse 20. Go there quickly. God, I was Go there. Let, me, let me have some of you. Ten more minutes. Oh my God, I'm excited. Next year is not a year to joke. Serve God or don't serve him. Serve God, don't serve him. Amen. I just told you they die on Christmas Day. A group of politicians. Veterans. And a gentleman. Very young. Everybody love him. What's what, what they gonna do? They gonna do a small poster, a picture. You saw the picture. They gonna do a poster, a picture. They got down on Christmas Day. He died. Nothing wrong. He shared day with his children. Went to the gym. After the gym, came to the bathroom to take shower. He collapsed. And died. Christmas Day. Wealthy man will bless the money. He want he won't be president to get money. And he can't be. But he died. Life is not promising to anybody. Take God serious. Look at your neighbor and say, take God serious. Take God serious. What would it cost you to just come to church for a few minutes and go home and do your yoko yoko? Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got plenty of time to do your yoko yoko or to do your fifi fifi. You, you got enough time. Give God. Look at what Jesus said. Look at what Jesus said. Somebody got a coin on it. Give me one coin. Somebody give me a coin. Quickly, give me one coin. Give me a coin. You got a coin with you? Would you give me the coin? Give me the coin quickly. God bless you. Hallelujah. Early in the morning, Jesus Christ picked up the coin. He showed to the disciples and the, the crowd. He said, who picture is it? They said, Caesar. Who picture is it? He said, he said, he said, he said, he said give Caesar what is Caesar and give God what is God. But you're giving Caesar and not giving God. And you want God to help you. How can this thing work? Hallelujah. You spend more time outside the church than how you're supposed to spend it to God. I'm not talking to somebody here. And God said in his word, he said, do not forsake the assembly of God of together. God also said, my father's house is a house of prayer. I'm not talking to somebody in this place. Where? It is God. That's what I mean. You're nothing work out for you. You die early. The only reason you're supposed to live for. You know what the scripture say? You know what the scripture say? I will not die for what? But live to do what? To do the works of God. So, 
What evidence do you have when you're not doing the word of God for you to live? A manufacturer will manufacture a product that has purpose than not serving. If that product not serving the purpose, they not worth to be on the shelf. So your, 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 the reason for your existing is to worship God and be in your presence so that God will carry on something. Lift your hands and say, God, I will be in your presence forever. In the name of Jesus, say that. It's not play. That is what happened. David said, I was glad. When they said unto me, he was not sad. He was glad when they said unto me. For 25 years, I have never missed church one Sunday. 25 good years. The day I made church, that, then that means I'm not living. Amen. 25 years, I'm intoxicated with church. That's why no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against me will be condemned. You don't mess with a man who after God heart. You don't. I'm not perfect, but I'm after God business. Jesus told his disciples, he told his mother, can you see I'm about my father business? Somebody shout hallelujah. Look at your name and say, who business are you after? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah. That's what you're supposed to do. Somebody shout hallelujah. This 2024, you got to make sure to walk with this God. I can prophesy all now until tomorrow morning, but God wants me for you to get the word tonight. So he can bless you. When you went over to the other side, there was a stone. What is it? Every three o'clock, that angel never missed visitation. I speak to the angel of the Lord to give me people and probably solve them. Even as I'm standing right now, I pray that God open your eyes because there's an angel that's standing right by me here. Yeah. Somebody don't know what I'm talking about. Amen. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you are connected with God, He sent protection, He sent healing, He sent deliverance, He sent guardian, He sent favor, He sent blessings on you. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. I told the woman in Minnesota, I said, they put your son in prison for 25 years. She said, yeah, I got to tell me. I said, if I be your man of God, they will free you in seven years. In what? I said, if they don't free that boy, anywhere you see me preaching, call me a false prophet. Seven years. The father came on the phone and said, but prophet, why they can't free him tomorrow? I said, no. <laughs> the reason he stayed for seven years, so that he will repent good, good. So when you come from there, you will not hold illegal gun with you anymore. Sometimes God will allow you to go through a situation so that you can learn lesson. Every mistake is not a mistake. Mistake is for you to learn in the mistake. If you repeat the mistake, then you are a fool. Because mistake for learning. If you've been married before, and it did not work, you learn from the fresh. What make it, it did not work. So the second can work. That's what the Bible says. Affliction shall not occur for the second. Why? Because you know the first affliction, you know how to avoid something. But many of you, the second I can't go on, tear go on, four go on, five go on, and you stay a dummy and making a lot of mistakes. Nobody shout hallelujah. And you 40 years old, you stay making mistakes, you are a fool because fool at 40. Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Somebody shout hallelujah. Am I talking to somebody in this place? Somebody say amen. This year that coming, make sure I go in your plan. Make sure see God first. Don't make a permanent decision in a temporary situation. Somebody shout hallelujah. Number three, I got seven, but I'll give you the last one because of time. Number three, Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Acts 20, 24. Acts 20 verse 24. The Apostle Paul encountered some problem with people. But look at the approach. Apostle Paul said, look at what he said. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of telling others the good news about wonderful grace of God. Hallelujah. My life and waffling. Let me see for another translation quickly. So I can tell you something. See for another translation. That's not good news. Uh-huh. This is what I'm looking for. Now you see what I'm saying? Let us read together. One, two, three. Go everybody read. But none of these things move me. 
nor do I count my life dear to myself, so that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of grace of God. What is he saying? He's saying that if you step on my toe, it will not move me. If you talk about me, it will not move me. I'm getting ready to preach. Somebody shout hallelujah. I, I, I want you to look at that thing. Are you hearing me here? Mm -hmm. Is there anybody hearing me? Mm -hmm. Somebody say, mm -hmm. Look at what Apostle Paul said. Look at the scream. Apostle Paul said, None of these things move me. Am I talking to somebody? What the poor man, if you cross my mom, it's not going to move me. You call me names, it's not going to move me. You call me all kinds of names, it's not going to move me. Call me fake, call me liar, call me this, call me demons, it's not going to move me. Why? I got a summon ahead of me. I want to finish my work that God has called me to. I can't make it with distraction. Next year is a year. I'm going to leave something behind me. I'm marking to reach the call. I'm not talking to somebody. Paul is saying, this year that's coming, I'm going to leave something behind. Nothing will move me. Nothing will move me. Cause me if you want. Lie to me if you want. Do it if you not. But I come to let you know, the apostle Paul said, no, no, no thing shall move me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? We got a few seconds. Are you ready now? Because your shout will do something. Are you ready now? I hear somebody saying, yes, Lord. Can I tell to somebody here? Look at somebody saying, yes, Lord. This year is a year. I hear it coming. You got a few seconds. I say, you got a few seconds. Are you ready to shout? Because the word is about to fall. Are you ready to shout? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Somebody shout, happy new year. Jump on your feet. Go to the wall. Walk around. Hug somebody. Hug somebody. Come on, walk around. Walk around. Happy. Happy New Year. You made it. 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 Jump on your feet. Go to the wall. Walk around. Hug somebody. Hug somebody. Come on, walk around. Walk around. Happy. Happy New Year. You made it. 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 We made it. Hey, da, ba, ba, ba.
God. Thank you. Put on your honey. Let me profess out of the new year. Put on your honey. Sam, go to your seat quickly. Put on your honey. <laughs> Let me prophesy to the new year. Pour up your honey. Pour up your honey. Pour up your honey. Pour up your honey and get ready for the feet wash. So you can stand on new grounds and give more territory. Yes. This new year is a really powerful year. Wow. The devil just lost. The devil just lost. The devil just lost. He just lost. He thought he had you. He didn't want you to see the new year. But the devil just lost. Wow. In Jesus' name. Everybody come to the middle. Let's pray. Somebody control the children. Sha, I need quietness in that place. Yes, I'm coming there. Yes. Wow. In Jesus' name. Everybody come to the middle. Let's pray. Somebody control the children. Sha, I need quietness in that place. Oh, yes, I'm coming there. Get your honey. No, that's the same to your seat. First Psalm 14, verse 29. Don't play with this mystery. It's a mystery. Mystery is something that you don't really understand. It's a mystery. Happy New Year. The best resolution for this year is not to miss church. And they continue in him day by day. Give Caesar what is Caesar. And give God what is God. The apostle Paul said, none of the things move me. What are some of these tell my soul? They call me names. They don't move me because I want to finish the work. In other words, Paul was saying, I'm very focused on the examen. Every time I read that scripture, I chapter 20, verse 24, he said, I'm focused on the examen. So I'm not distracted. If you want to achieve this year, leave some things behind and focus on God. We got work to do. God has deposited so much inside of me, but if I don't see you, I can't deliver. We need to be a beneficiary. We are passing through in this world, every one of us. The best you can do. Look now how my continent has brightened because I tasted a little bit of this honey. Let us read together. One, two, three, go. Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. Look now. That was my father. Genet on me, my ancestors. There were some things they did when they didn't know God. And it ran down to generation. But honey is symbolic of sweetness in your lives. Hallelujah. I told Sister Jenna, she had five miscarriages. Sister Jenna, she from Kentucky. One of my daughters from the prayer line. Five different miscarriages. She went everywhere for prayers. Nothing was working. Said so Janet called me crying on the phone. I, as a matter of fact, I get thousands of calls every day. Thousands of calls, seriously. And yet, my wife, I had to cut my phone off to sleep. If I don't shut it down, I can't sleep. Thousands of calls. So she called me. She said, Five miscarriages. And everybody in her family was laughing at her because she's the only person in her family that didn't have a child. At the age of 47. And I 
at her. I said, go in the store, buy me honey. And call me tomorrow. She said, God forbid. I said, what? She said, I'm calling you today. <laughs> <laughs> she went and grabbed the honey from Walmart. She said, as a matter of fact, I remember I said, Jenna said, I will not leave the phone until I reach Walmart. She grabbed the honey, prayed over the honey. I said, from today, your life will be sweet. It is the word of God. We prayed about it. Hallelujah. And we prayed. She went by the library. She came back because she was on her way when I prayed over the honey. She tasted the honey. She went to the library. She stayed there for three weeks because she had some business doing there. She came back. She called me. And she said, Prophet, I'm having some pain in my stomach since I drank the honey. And my stomach burned so much, some kind of way. I said, Say, Jenna, don't worry. There's a deliverance. She said, I hope somebody didn't do something to me in the library. I said, nobody did something to me. Deliverance is coming. For you. Somebody say hallelujah. And we pray. And I said, God will give you a child. Amen. Amen. Six months later, she got pregnant at the age of 47. She born a baby boy and she need me favor over my name. If you check on the prayer, yeah, my well, I got over a hundred nieces on the prayer. Over a hundred. As part of Pastor, Co- I mean, Pastor uh, uh, Singbe said to me, that's one of my special gifts. To produce children. So that gave inside of me. So whoever that lay hand upon that, you must produce. No matter what happened, you must produce. So it, be, yo, 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 he, said, he said, my father troubled the land. But when I tasted the honey, my life became sweet again. I'm not working on my own. I did not call myself. I don't have no power on my own. Hallelujah. Don't have no power. I make a vow to God. That's when people accuse me, I cry because you don't already know me. I make a vow. I say, Lord, certain thing when I do it, strike me dead. Strike me dead. If I play with Christianity, if I'm faking, I say, Lord, strike me. I have been sitting there for 25 years. Because I love God with all my heart, everything. So it hurt when somebody just accuses me like that. Who don't know me. And you know what I'm saying? I say, God, if I do anything foolish. Strike. I said it so many times. There's no compromising inside of me when I come to God. If you're looking for a true man of God in the whole universe, you can count on me. I'm one of the truthful men of God ever that love God all the way and all the way and all the way and all the way. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not those that, will, that, 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 that say, eh, 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 feed my sheep, then I eat the sheep. I don't eat sheep, I feed sheep. You know what I'm saying? So I'm so serious. Don't play with that. No girl of mine, no daughter of mine that I ever call in the night and tell you foolish thing on the phone. God forbid. It has never happened. And it can't even happen. Amen. Jesus said, when you want to know the, a true man and a holy man of God, you tell from his fruit. Because you know them, not by prophecy, you know them by the fruit. You know the true man by the fruit. The living lady. Luke chapter 1 verse 17. He said, I speak to the holy man of God. Amen. As you lift that honey tonight, by the special grace of God, except God did not call me. Except I call myself. But I prophesy tonight. That honey is not God. That honey is symbolic of sweet death. As you pray over it, it's a point of contact for sweetness in your life. Amen. Father, whoever under the sound of my voice, that 2023, your life was better. You didn't find something through. Business was rough. Things were not me for. You almost gave up. I prophesied today. Let me get on the altar. I prophesied today in the name of Jesus. As that honey is in your hand after tonight, when you taste that honey, every bitterness will tend to sweetness in the name of Jesus. You will be thinking what kind of job to do because many jobs will call you. Many businesses will call you. People that don't like you, they will favor you. They will run into you and say, even though I don't like you, but I just came to give you this hundred thousand dollars. I prophesy it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, when the man will please the Lord, he made even his enemy a piece of him. Hallelujah. With peace, a peace, a peace. Somebody shout hallelujah. That honey that is in your hand is not God. It's a point of contact. 
Acts chapter 19, 11, the Bible says, Apostle Paul had a handkerchief. He had a handkerchief. There's a man of God that's supposed to send for me to go to South Africa. He's a Nigerian. But he noticed for mantle. Everywhere he reached, if you are mad, he just stretched his handkerchief. Your fast sensei, plus another fast sensei, everything just come back quick. The mantle. That had to know him in South Africa. It's a Nigerian, but he's based there. The mantle in your head now for joke. He just lay up. He come to yourself. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And it's not nowhere else beside the Bible. It's in the Bible, in the book of Acts. You say, hang a chair. Elijah had a mantle. He cloth that fell. He parted the Jordan. Moses had a stroke of raw in his hair. The book of Jim have oil. They know that when God called me, he gave me two things. I will never forget. He gave me oil and water to use to bless people all over the world. Oil and water. That's why everywhere, in fact, people know on the prayer now. Every time I call for prayer, everybody have their water by them, but with them. No one, anybody, everybody put on the prayer now. Soon you call them, I got my water here with me. Hallelujah. I'm so serious. Father, I pray. As I read the scripture. Genetos said, my father has troubled the land. But after I took the honey, I saw my way clear. Whatever trouble in your life, after this honey tonight, God will clear it out in the name of Jesus. Your amen is sick. I said, God will clear in the name of Jesus. There shall be no more bitterness in your life, no more trouble, no more confusion, no more trouble, no more disappointment, no more disappointment, no more disappointment, no more disappointment, no more disappointment. As our honey is sweet, so your life should be sweet in the name of Jesus. Oh God, your wife said it. Jonathan said it. He said, after I tasted a little bit of honey, Oh my goodness, every trouble. Now I see my continent. That what continent me? The continent has brought in. I mean, many of you, your faces always look the problem. Many people face it. Some of you, your faces look the problem. The women they see you, you're beautiful, but because of the trouble, your face look like homie Akia. But I'm come to talk to you tonight. Somebody shout hallelujah. After this, honey, trouble. My countenance has brightened. Today's smile will never leave your face. I said from today's smile will never leave your face. Whatever the enemy will send that will make you not a smile, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Whatever that will come to trouble you, I trouble it in the name of Jesus. Your enemy will be made sure in the name of Jesus. Your love will never be made sure in the name of Jesus. I break down every satanic altar from your lineage in the name of Jesus. Every rope that ever hold you down, you can't get married, you can't have children. I break it tonight in the name of Jesus. As you partake of the honey, oh God, as the honey is sweet, from today you will be sweet until the rest of your life in the name of Jesus. Sweetness will never depart from you. I say sweetness will never depart from you. Some of you, you apply for a job, they ain't call you, they will call you after tonight. Some of you got best thing where they stay with the government. After tonight, they will release that money. They will release that money. I said they will release that money. Everything I hid on your life today, I decree. If I be a man of God, I decree. The Bible said, believe in God. Believe also in his prophet. And so shall you prosper. Today, I declare as the prophet of the generation, I decree as you are connected to the grace, you will never be disgraced. Your life will be sweet. Many of you, before the end of this month, your testimony will be too much. I say your testimony will be too much. 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 People will see you, they will not recognize you. Because as we cross over to the new year, your life, your beauty, your whatever have crossed over. Every frustration you are leaving it behind. Every hardship you are leaving it behind. In the name of Jesus, live your honey up. And so, Father, you don't have to say that I'm praying now. You finish saying what you want to say. Lord, I say, my Father, you don't have to pray now. You finish praying. Leave it with me now. Father, 
in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree and I declare over that honey right now, Lord. They have prophesied upon it. And I'll be a seven father everywhere in this house tonight. That holy honey. They are now worshiping it. The same way you told Samuel to take the oil and anoint David. And your present kid upon David. That honey is a symbol of everyone continents to be bright, going forward in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you hear me. And you always hear me. You call me from the background of Islam. And you are using me, Lord. Bless your people today. Bless your people today. Bless them today. The new year will never ever disappoint them. Every trouble ahead of them because of the honey that life will be sweet going forward. Thank you, God, for hearing my prayers. In Jesus' name. Amen. Open it and lick some right away. Open it. And as you lick it, say, Lord, I say, honey, sweet, my life will be sweet forever. If it's not happy, I'm not called by God. Your life will be sweet. I say, open it, lick it, lick it. Prophesy to it. Prophesy to it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Now, the second thing and the third thing is, we have prophesied, we have done what God tells us to do. God allow you to cross over. Just give him a thanksgiving offering. Say, Lord, I want to tell you, thank you that you crossed me over. Bring it on the altar, put the cash up, a thanksgiving offering. The next thing will wash your feet, and then we'll release you from here. And then you can go eat. And then tomorrow... We started fast.